All right, here we go. Thank you, everybody, on Patreon for following along and being a supporter of our show. We're here with the Mr. Chris Haffey. We just finished episode 100. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out on YouTube and iTunes and Spotify and all that shit. Uh, we just had a three-hour episode with Chris, and we're here back again. We're going to do a section commentary with Chris on three of his most iconic sections. We have VG20, Leading the Blind, and Drip Drop. So we're going to get into these, see if Chris has anything to say about them, and uh, have some fun right now. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's get it going. VG20 first, right? Boom. Classic. Super yeah. iconic. Yeah. Just, um, see, yeah. just seeing like a, a video groove intro now, like brings back instant nostalgia, right? I was just going to say the same exact thing. I was <laughs> like, it hits you, man. It hits you different. It's the same as hearing music from an old video. You're just like, far out. It brings you straight back. But yeah, I mean, this is we, the, the bit that Dave really had to convince me <laughs> on. Uh, which even when I look back now, some of it is like a little bit cringy for me. But like, I think overall he did it well enough that whatever. And I think the reason why is because I'm just a, I'm just a more introverted person. So it just feels weird to kind of expose yourself in that way. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Dave did an awesome job with it. Yeah, he killed the section too. And it's cool that it's like, like I said before, it's his, his favorite section from what he said on our podcast. So it's cool that you got that under your belt also. Yeah, I mean, that's a trip, man. I mean, and I think the, the fall in here is that I hurt my ankle on in here. So, I mean, like I said, it was just a long process. Like, we were both so deep in it, and I think that's kind of what it was. Like, I was living with him and all that stuff. So, it was like, yeah, it was just uh, a yeah, special project, I guess. There was just so much dedication put into it on both fronts, so. It means a lot to me to hear Dave say that. Honestly, there's so much, the history in his videos to be at the top of that list is like fucking surreal. Real 24 issues. That's the that's the ankle right there. And that's all because you landed in like a ditch, or like dirt. Yeah, there's a little pipe at the bottom. You can barely see it, and I my front wheel got stuck in that, and my ankle turned in, and then I just sat back, and I didn't actually break it. I just sprained it really bad. But it was like a six and a half week kind of recovery. Um, yeah. Ankle injuries suck. They just take forever. Yeah. Man, I saw, I've seen people with like very, you know, like limited, like a very not serious ankle injury literally almost ruin their skating over it because they don't wait till it's entirely healed. Mm -hmm. And like that was always a big thing for me when I was injured. It was like, I wanted to make sure I was a thousand percent healed and I wasn't doing more damage. Like the doctors would be like, yeah, you're good. You're cleared to skate. And I'd be like, are you, you're sure? <laughs> like, whereas usually people are like, oh yeah, they said, you know, I should be able to skate in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to skate now. And it's like, man, that, and it's just never going to get better if you do that. Yeah. I feel like you are your own best judge about that sometimes. Like, you know, you go and test it out. You put your skates on, you roll around, you kind of feel it out. I'm going through an injury myself, so I'm doing the same thing too. Like, yeah. there is no six to eight weeks, whatever. It's like whenever you feel good, you start skating again. 100%. You got to listen to your body, man. Yeah, that's number one. Especially as you get older. Yeah. That shit lasts a lot longer. <laughs> A little, is this sublime, this part? Um, no, it's, it's uh, fuck, who is it? It's um, Josh Martinez, I think, if I remember right. But it's very sublime as to the, the vibe. Yeah, it's, it's got yeah. the, I always thought it was sublime. It is very sublime. Yeah, when you said that, I was like, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's cool too. This is almost kind of a transition from when I moved out of San Diego to kind of in Orange County and stuff. So there's still a lot of like OG San Diego spots, but also kind of to me, Orange County was like new and exciting at the time. And uh, so it's cool to like see, it was kind of the transition, like this is in San Diego. And then like the spot beforehand was at USC and LA and stuff. But I guess we kind of got all over the place when we were filming, but this was like, this was also right kind of when I got out of school so I left school when I was um, 16. And so this was like the ultimate freedom. Like 
imagine like going from being in school every day and hating it to then all of a sudden living at Dave Payne's house with Randy Spicer as a roommate and fucking skating every day, filming a part. It was like the, I was, I was like literally living the dream. Yo, for real. That's crazy to hear that. I forgot that you, uh, dropped out of high school. Oh, skate. Right here. This is where it started getting the part of the section started getting heavy. Yeah. Starting to warm up a bit. <laughs> Starting to warm up. There's like yeah. 60 clips in this section. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so time many I clips. How, how did those shorts stay on? I don't know. Like my ass <laughs> is completely uh, the whole fucking... The shorts... Oh, that. Oof. That was like the high jump challenge part of rollerblading. Remember that? Yeah. It was, uh, I think we had, jump a, over the we highest had a section on that thing. I think like everyone trying to jump over it. Yeah. Who is it like you, Farmer, a couple of people? Yeah. But yeah, I do remember what you're talking about, Billy. Like at that point, it was like you yeah. find something that was high as fuck just to prove yeah. you could jump. <laughs> yeah. <high>. yeah. <laughs> it's like either jump or 360 or something. And Brandon Campbell was a part of yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah, true. Oh, that was super dope. Five oh, over that dude, car. He, did, he did a couple of. Yeah, that was, that's was, why it was perfect. It was like the tiniest little lip. Oh. Yeah, was, is... was that a friend's car or a random car? No, it was a random car in the parking lot. Okay. Definitely up the pressure level to get over it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Don't blow it. Yeah. I, love yeah. That, I love that you always had misty flips too. As like a street skater, you still had misty flips down. Yeah, that was what was funny. So when I said I started skating park, like when I was very first skating, one of the first things I learned how to do was Misty Flip because I thought it was fucking sick because of Ryan Jacqueline. And oh. Like, oh, and, sick. Yeah, the regular did. He had like the sickest Misties. Yeah, so I was did. like, I got to learn that shit. Dude, these past few, you full cap true top acid that rail. That's like <laughs> such a unique trick. Like, I feel like that's the first and last time we've seen, you know what I mean? Like That's true. On a rail it's such too. a super hard technical trick that you just like be like, okay, here, I'm going to do this one, you know? But you know, it's funny. That's one of the things that I did. Like I would, I probably trained that on a play rail that morning. Like I probably did a hundred of them and didn't do any other tricks and then went to that really? rail and tried to do that. I would do that shit all the time. And like, you know, it's funny as I would think like say 270 backslides or 270 back torques or I used to think like, I want people to think I'm better than I am. So <laughs> Instead of learning how to do a hurricane topsail, which everyone can do, and I'm scared shitless of, I'm going to learn how to 270 back torque really good, which not a lot of people do. And then I'm just going to get those on lock, and then people are going to be like, fuck, he's, he's really good. And they'd think that was harder, but I couldn't do the trick everyone else was really like everyone else could do. So I, I like would think that way in my tricks. Like, what could I do that would make people think I'm better than I am? that's a funny way of that's going a about good that. strategy yeah like legitimately at one point in time i like was thinking like i've pulled the wool over everyone's eyes like i'm not that good i've just choose my trick well and like <laughs> that's why but to be honest like i always wanted to be the best at whatever i did so that was my approach was like what makes you the best yeah. and i was like you do tricks other people can't do and then so i would learn those instead of the tricks a lot of people could do mm -hmm. and it's funny like you'd go to a contest and i would have a unique tricks skill set but like i was scared shitless of the tricks that other guys were doing mm -hmm. like specifically hurricane topsoils for some reason that trick just always scared the shit out of me but there's yeah. the, there's a flaw in your plan because you pretty much can do every trick <laughs> it's how scared you are when you're doing it though like there was a lot of tricks that like i would do just because like i felt like i needed to do them or something but, you hurricane topsail Dallas kink, which is like one of the biggest rails you could have possibly hurricane topsail. That that rail's super mellow though, so it wasn't yeah, like true. that was actually first try. But that what was um, it? Yeah, it's which is crazy because usually every trick on Dallas kink took me like five fucking hours to do, and I think it was Connor O'Brien was there with me that day, and I was like geared up for a battle. Like, hmm. all right, I'm going there. I'm gonna hurricane topsail this fucking rail, and it's going to take forever. And then the first time I jumped on it, I did the whole rail and I was like, what? I think in the clip too, at the end, I, I kind of like, I'm like, what? And it's me going like, what the fuck? Like, so you're done? Or, like I was ready to be here for five hours. Like, That's good. Back it up. You get an early day that day. 
That's funny. I just skated Dallas King for the first time like a couple months ago. And I was like, I just want to, I don't want to do anything epic on it. You know, this thing's been destroyed. I'm like, I'm going to three top soul it the other way, not the hurricane way, like the easy oh, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I could probably do it pretty easily. I was like, first or second try. It took me like five tries, but I was like, I thought I was going to do a first try too. And if yeah. you would, if I would have known that you did yours first try, I would have been more motivated to get mine first shot. <laughs> That's so sick. You did a first try. I, I love That's that. So sick. Um, it so took me about 10 minutes to try to jump on it, but then the first time I finally jumped on it, I did it. Oof, sick. That's it, all or nothing. And I, yeah. I, I know what you mean, though. Rolling up, testing it, rolling up, testing it, rolling up, looking, like yeah. feeling it, looking like that whole, yeah. And then yeah. it's been like... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah totally. So next yeah. up is leading the blind, correct? If we're going chronologically. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah leading it, it, the blind it, it, and then drip drop. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah, all right. So leading to my first 4x4 video. This is probably one of the... I actually started this from the intro because the intro had like you in it too, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I, by the way, that trick, so iconic. Oh, wait, so that many trick. iconic tricks. <laughs> yeah, I've, this was like... I mean, it's a prime example of what I was talking about where you found an old spot and just tried to shut it down. Like, that was... Yeah kind of the mentality on this one. And it was kind of, it was partly a lazy way to go about it. It's like a way to get really good tricks without finding oh, new spots. It. I didn't realize like that was did. in the section. I cannot believe that's first try. Yeah. And look, I think I'm going like, well, I took it off. But I was like, it was kind of like a well that's why I was un unenthusiastic middle finger. Usually after a battle, you're like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. But that one was kind of like, oh, well, fuck you then. The more mature that shot Chris. of you and Shima was in Ecuador, right? It was, dude. That was one of the craziest yeah. fucking trips in my life. Like, that I, it was one of the first times I went anywhere internationally. And on that vert ramp, when we left there, we had to be escorted out by security. We got into a car, like, and people were pulling our fucking clothes off as we were, like, getting to this car. I think someone's bracelet or necklace got yanked. And then we got in a car and people climbed on top of the car and were literally on the car for like Super part fast. of the drive back to where we were going. No, I heard crazy things about that trip. Uh, and you, you, you were staying with the mayor's son, right? Yeah. Yeah. What? And it was like, yeah, yeah, that whole trip was a, it was crazy. Like the mayor was up for reelection and he was doing all these initiatives, like putting parks in and he had built a new skate park. And that was like, we were there. So, it was like a new park and the best in the world were there to open it up. And it was like kind of like a, a campaign hit sort of thing. Wow. That's yeah, why you know if he won or not. Did he, uh, I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I, it was so long ago. Kind of um, look into that. I want to look at it. Yeah. I'm curious to see if it worked. You yeah, sold this, yeah. right? Power banks, three soul. Yeah, that was, that's a spot that looks so sick. If there was, if it was easier to get speed for that thing, it would be so fun. I was gonna say I skated that, and it's I couldn't even get up there. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like you have to time everything perfect, like from the dirt onto the yep. cement had to be perfect, and then you had to barely clear the knuckle to get into the first bank to get enough speed from it. There was I, I did like a million run ups without having enough speed to do that trick. Man, it's a trip watching all this stuff. Like I'm like, yeah, it's it's crazy watching that uh, curve red rail. I remember going there back in the day. It was like before you did it, and they were yeah. like, "Oh, here, does anyone want to do it?" Yeah, and we were like, it was, "No." Yeah, no. it's one of those. This is a those nightmare. <laughs> yeah, such a was, nightmare. And then we saw the clip of you doing it. And I was like, "No way, someone did that." Such it was one of those rail. local legend spots. I don't think I ever would have done that if I didn't live in San Diego because it was one of those like. I saw it every fucking time we went past right. there and it was like on one of the trolley stops and we went over that way a lot. So it was like, yeah, it was one of those things where you just sit, I'm sure it was the same with you with some of the spots in New York, like mm -hmm. say that tennis court. Over over again. Yeah. yeah. And it just it was like, already like a spot you guys had skated before with like the, you know, with the banks on the other side. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so there was another yeah. thing there. So you'd go there and that spot was kind of fun. It's always so look at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it was just, this, when I was like, oh, it's time. That chain grind to Terrell. Oh, that was a that, battle. That, that was a battle that was too. Battle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that one was clearly a battle, but fuck that was, and it's, I think that was the only chain grind I ever did. It was when they were kind of getting popular and, but that, 
I was going to say that was yeah. like, if you are going to do a chain grind, you did it right. It was something different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the same night as Altoro? Yeah, same night. Yeah. Oof. I have to give props to Sayer though. Sayer was the first person that did that rail to chain the rail. Oh, he did it. That is a Sayer. Sayer yeah. yeah, he did. I think it was in Life Plus or something like that. Yeah, Solo, Solo right? Solo. Yeah. Huge shout out, Sayer. Yeah. Yeah, Sayer's a man. This is insane. Oh, yeah, this that's why. Right. First, he was a spot, like one of my favorite spots in the world. None of that stuff's skatable anymore. And they took the big ledges out. Yeah. Oh, did they really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's I fun. see I actually compli- went to Bercy and did a show in that arena. So it was kind of like a, a cool, like full circle moment. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's how you found out it was gone? Yeah. Damn. It's a ticket booth now where the ledges were. It's a ticket booth. <laughs> yeah. I think actually that one though is still there, the big one. But you did that gap to soul. Was, was there like, did you miss that at all? Because if you, I feel like if you missed the soul, you just straight to your toes and face. Yeah, I did a lot of them like where I either put my hand down or like would jump over and basically shin slide down the ledge. Oof. It, it was like, I think I, I probably jumped over the wall 30 times and, and only once did I like commit to the inside of the ledge. Oh, if that's all you need, the one. And luckily, I stayed Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just crazy. Uh, so we're moving on to the... The scariest part about that actually wasn't the, it wasn't the drop. It was the stairs that started halfway down. Because it was like, I'm pretty sure I could lock on at the top. Yeah. But then if I gain yeah, speed, and sure. come up on top of the stairs. So that was what really was the mental kind of battle for that one. That yeah. makes sense. That make, I, Yeah. I would imagine like once you get to the, the stairs, the, you're like, that's it. I'm good. The yeah. part where you have yeah. to commit is like the part where there's the most danger. For sure. You know? pivotal, the, pivotal yeah. moment, the, no, the point of no return. <laughs> like if it was set up the other way, if like the stairs were, and then it was the other way, you oh, could like yeah. commit to it yeah. without worrying about tumbling down the stairs. So, yeah. For sure. Huh. All right, so well, gonna... Chris, we're, we're going to take you through one more section yeah. again. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much for uh, spending your time with us. And thank you to all of our Patreons for, yeah, of course. Uh, being patreons oh i was watching this with i was watching this with john is that is this a painting of mount everest because you did the thing at woodward that was referred to at mount as mount everest is i don't know Pat, is? this is all pat pat's editing so i don't know if that if okay, it's i was curious popular. about that yeah let's but, run with it i should i don't it's like up for interpretation <laughs> But did you refer to that thing as Mount Everest? Is that what that was? Uh, or what? The gap? No, I actually, it's funny. I referred to it as the Sean Dorton gap because there was a BMXer that had straight aired it named Sean Dorton. And it was funny. At that point in time, I was at Woodward all the time. And I literally would go around and do what I did with the 4x4 video. I would like one up every sport as mm-hmm. best I could. Not for me necessarily, but so that when everyone else was at Woodward, BMXers, everyone, they'd be like, a rollerblader fucking jump from here to there. Like, you know, like totally or yeah. 40 this gap or like there was a few tricks I did there that were for the mm. sole purpose of like being like blading owns this camp. Like not, not me, like, but a rollerblader, like, cause there was but, BMX. But blading, no. Yeah. That's honestly, so honestly, can I honestly can relate to that sentiment. I remember, I remember when we were like trying to like really differentiate blading from the other things like, uh so and and you were extremely successful in that regard so oh, yeah th- th- that was one of those yeah but yeah, yeah all of this man i i i feel like we just brushed past the 180 that was in the so beginning many. as well yeah, yeah. we kind of so, covered it in the in the uh yeah. Podcast, yeah but um but yeah that was just it was the one that got away mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I remember. Uh, I think this section, honestly, was probably the most comfortable I ever felt on skates. Um, oof. You know, like this one. This, this one, switch wall ride. Yeah, that was. I want. I, I. I had no business trying that, but the setup <laughs> was so perfect that I was like, "It had to be." If done. it was on the other side with my natural wall ride, I think I would have done that easily. But I was like, "Dude, it's so fucking perfect. Mm. I can't not try it." Like. One of Absolutely. one of your one of your favorite tricks of mine. Uh, no, my favorite tricks of yours is in this section. But uh, I'll tell you when it comes up. I oh. love this trick as well. 
Yeah. Back to oh, the rewind now is so amazing. Good. Oh, I love that. It's fine. I remember filming this and just feeling so comfortable on skates. So like, good. You look so it. I think at this point in time, I probably felt more comfortable on skates than I did in shoes. Yeah, I don't think you could do that 180 without being the most comfortable you've ever been. Yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. That's, oh, that, favorite trick. That, that's the that, one. That zero eight fish to back torque. Yeah. So good. Thanks, man. I, I was, I was really, on a square I, flat rail. Like, I mean, a square rail. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those perfect ones, though, where you could kind of hit both sides of it. Like, you could almost like grab the whole top of it but i used to love square rails too more than round rails i don't know why like but i i had an affinity for square rails um but uh that one it's funny because at the time i never liked that trick because i was trying to stay fakie like do zero uh, I, I, work and then come back out fakie and i tried it so many fucking times <laughs> so like when i rolled off the thing i'm st i was like fuck i still didn't turn fakie like that. I know what you mean. I, know. I actually like that trick quite a bit. Back in the day, fakie was like so important. Like if you came up forward, oh, it was yeah. like taboo, you know. Yeah. But yeah. oh, that was super uh, sick. That one got overlooked yeah. too. Illusion forward. Oh, yeah. acid. Illusion acid. Oof. Yeah, that was a real one. This is legitimately the only true oh, spin. Oh, that one. That, that's the only true soul I ever did on a handrail. Oh, yeah, you did and one in the, in the Vibrolux VOD, but it was a ledge, right? It was a ledge. And that yeah. and that rail was square and about that fat, so it was more of a ledge than it was a rail. Uh -huh. I never true sold a, a, a down rail that was round. Fun Did fact. You... Yeah, that's crazy. That that 360 was this insane, by the way. This is so messed up right here. Hop. Yeah, that was... I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. But it <laughs> and the zero out. eight fish as well, just like, boof. Full send. So good. Yeah, yeah this, they, that, they call this Mount Everest. <laughs> I don't know. It maybe, maybe. I always know it as a Sean Dorton gap. But what's funny Sean is, Dorton, so I yeah. was, I was up there at Woodward, and I wanted to do that, and so I drove to San Diego and picked Shima up, and drove back, and did it the next day. But that was a morning session. Obviously, the sun ones when I ate shit all. And it was because I couldn't get the speed around this corner uh, on top of the ramp because it was too slippery. So I took a break and poured Coke all over the ground. Oh, uh, sure. And we went, we went and had some food and shit. And then we came back and the Coke had dried like sugar and all that stuff. So the top of the ramp was sticky as fuck. So I was able to like rip around the corner the way I, I needed to. And so that was like my, I tried it twice. And they were the best two attempts in terms of getting the right speed for it. And it was all just because we changed the warm up slightly. Just because of a can of Coke. Can of Coke. That's all you did. <laughs> Sick. Well, Chris, we've kept you for quite a while. Yeah, it's all good, man. That was good times. It was good catching up. It was yeah. really good catching up. Definitely. Everybody watching, uh, if you haven't yet, check out episode 100 with Chris Haffey. It's out now. If you're watching this right now, enter our 100th episode giveaway. We're going to have a $500 gift card to Intuition Skate Shop. Just leave a comment on episode 100 on YouTube. On episode 101, we will announce the winner for a $500 gift card. Chris. Shout out to Matt Mickey because he's the man. Hell yeah, Matt Mickey at Intuition. Yeah. We're happy to support him. Chris, you're the fucking man. Thanks again Chris, for taking the time to do thank this. Thank you so much. Cheers, boys. I had a, had a good time, man. It was awesome. This has been awesome. Hopefully next time we get awesome. to catch up in person. Yeah, definitely. That would be awesome. Let's make it happen. Enjoy the rest of your day, Chris. You Thank do you the so same. Much. Have a good night, actually. It's yeah, it's almost, it's almost 1 a.m. <laughs> have a good sleep. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, see you, bro. Bye.